Hi guys, welcome to OB Talks. My name is Federico and I'm a scientific advisor for IB USA. In this brief weekly podcast, we're going to look into interesting and applied research paper in the field of enology. So wherever you are at work or at home, just sit down, relax, have a glass of wine and follow me. Hey everybody, welcome to this new episode of IB Talks. This week, we're going to discuss how can you reduce the ethanol content of your wine with non-conventional yeast. The article is published in the International Journal of Food Microbiology by Christian Varela of AWRI, and it's titled Sensory Profile and Volatile Aroma Composition of Reduced Alcohol Merlot Wines Fermented with Mitznikovia Pulcherrima and Saccharomyces uvarum. The conversion of sugar to alcohol by yeast is the most essential reaction during winemaking, without which wine cannot be produced. The final ethanol content is determined by the initial sugar content in the grapes. Therefore, a moderate reduction can be achieved with earlier harvest grapes without impacting the final quality of the wine. More substantial decreases instead can be achieved by post-fermentation processes. However, these techniques can alter the wine volatile composition and sensory profile. Producing less ethanol during fermentation remains one of the simplest and cheaper approaches and could be used in combination with other strategies. Saccharomyces cerevisiae is very efficient in producing ethanol. And even if the strains that we use are different, they generate comparable amount of alcohol fermenting the same mass. To reduce the ethanol yields, you have to redirect their metabolism towards biomass production or other secondary metabolites. Therefore, the research has focused on generating new saccharomyces or isolating non-conventional yeast. Non-conventional yeast can be non-saccharomyces or non-saccharomyces cerevisiae. In previous experiment by the same author, uh, indigenous strains of Mitznikovia pulcherima and another indigenous strains of saccharomyces rovarum were selected for very reduced production of ethanol. The aim of the study is to confirm the laboratory result and to describe the effect of these two yeasts on the sensory profile and the volatile composition in Merlot wines. The experiment included a positive control inoculated with only Saccharomyces cerevisiae and a negative control uninoculated. The treatments were co-inoculation of Metzinicabe pulcherima and Saccharomyces cerevisiae and single inoculation of Saccharomyces uvarum. The fermentation was 72 Fahrenheit and to better understand the impact on the strains, the native uh, population were reduced 24 hours before inoculation. The wine undergo chemical and sensory analysis at the end of fermentation and genomic analysis during fermentation. This result shows the sugar consumption and the yeast population dynamic during this wine fermentation. Fermentation inoculated with Saccharomyces cerevisiae and Mitznikovia pulcherima showed similar sugar consumption kinetics and the fermentation were done in 11 days. Interestingly, already at day two, Saccharomyces cerevisiae that is represented with a light blue were able to dominate the yeast population. Saccharomyces uvarum and inoculated fermentation instead were finished in 15 days, and Saccharomyces cerevisiae was present only at the end or starting from mid-fermentation, respectively. All the treatment resulted in a reduced ethanol concentration, starting from 0.7 up to 1.7. Glycerol, succinic acid, and TA were higher for all treatment, while no difference in malic acid were measured due to the ML fermentation. 
major differences in the concentration of volatile compounds were measured. And interestingly, even if Saccharomyces cerevisiae dominate the fermentation with Metzikanova pulcherimas, these wines were most similar to inoculated fermentation. The total concentration of esters was higher only for the Metzikanova pulcherima wine, in particular for 2-methyl-butyl acetate which is often only described as overripe fruit, sweet banana, juicy fruit. All treatments showed an increased concentration of higher alcohol, while the Mitznikava pulcherima and the inoculated wines were higher in the total concentration of sulfur compounds too. Mitznikava pulcherima and inoculated wine showed higher score for sensory descriptor that you would consider positive and desirable, and low scores for negative sensory attributes, even if they have high concentration of ethyl acetate and total sulfur compounds. In contrast, wine fermented with Saccharomyces vivarum showed a sensory profile mostly dominated by unusual and negative sensory attributes that would conventionally be considered of flavors. The author conclusion are that Mitznikova pulcherima succeed in producing a reduced ethanol content wine with desirable sensor characteristic, while Saccharomyces uvarum reduced the ethanol, but the wine has negative sensory attributes. Therefore, it's important in the future to keep investigating the effect of this species in different grape varieties and to evaluate strategies to improve Saccharomyces uvarum to maximize its potential. This is the end of our weekly podcast. Thanks for listening. If you'd like to see more of these videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or newsletter. If you'd like more information of IB non-conventional yeast, please contact your local sales representative. Stay safe, stay connected. My name is Federico, and this was IB Talks Weekly.